right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Andrew Wilcock, who is in the Midlands in England, in a sunny heat wave England right now. Right, Andrew? Absolutely. If it stays like this, I'll have a brilliant tan. Yeah, I know. I was watching the I was watching the football or soccer, as I like to call it in this country, the other day, and they were taking they were taking water breaks in the game. It was so hot. So uh, Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um Okay, so um, you know, Andrew is an expert in sales process engineering and the application of scientific and mathematical principles to achieve practical goals in the sales process. He's designed and implemented processes based on Lean, Six Sigma, TRIZ, and TOC principles. But today what we wanted to talk about is what can salespeople learn from their engineering counterparts? So what can Lean and Lean principles teach uh, salespeople. And maybe, Andrew, if you just want to baseline it to begin with for people who maybe have never heard of Lean or don't understand what Lean is. Surely. Well, Lean basically comes from uh, the Toyota production system, and it's a method of improving the flow. And if you think of um, sales orders or order inquiries, what we're looking for really is a constant flow. Um, Big ups and downs don't really do us any good at all uh, because we're never there when, when they happen. So what we're looking for as salespeople is just a constant flow of inquiries followed by a constant flow of conversions into orders. And that's really what we're looking for. And... Um, as we were talking before we just came on air here, I have a little bit of experience with the lean myself, having done lean mm -hmm. office many years ago. And one of the things I think that, and certainly one of the biggest eye openers for me was that people can lay out their process and go, oh, look, we have a great process. Look at it. It's all like sequential and it's all logical and everything. But it's the, the it's the the hidden delays that are inbuilt and the inefficiencies that you have to go down another level to really find out. And then it's quite shocking when you find them, right? Absolutely. And and one of the great things is when I walk into a room of engineers, for instance, and I give them a pen and I say, right, draw out your process of what you do every day. Um, they're great. They'll they'll they love it. Do the same with a couple of salespeople and they fall to pieces. Um, that They're not quite certain how their day looks or what happens, how a customer buys. But the biggest thing comes when I have salespeople and their sales managers in the room and the salespeople will draw out the map of what they do and the sales managers will turn around and say, surely that's not what you do. And it, yeah. so you... <laughs> That's not what we're supposed to do. Right? And um, you always get this, this challenge then from the inside. But I didn't know you were doing that. But it's only through mapping the process that you can see this. And then you're right. You can layer it down so that it's, okay, well, if this is what the customer is doing at this particular time, what do we need to know? And what questions should we be asking at this specific time? Uh. And obviously key to this, Andrew, is actually looking at it from a customer perspective, isn't it? And not build, because let's face it, at the end of the day, most people build processes to suit themselves and, and kind of leave the customer out of the equation. And that's one of the lean, one of the, I remember from when I did it, one of the lean principles was, okay, you should look at everything you're doing and ask yourself, if you told the customer that X percent of the money they were paying you was going towards that process, would they pay it to you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Um, and one of the first things that I tend to do is help the customer map out their customer's buying process. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we, once we've done that and everybody's happy and has agreed what the buying process looks like, then we map out the sales process underneath and see whether they align. And frequently they don't. And so that's the time when you start thinking, ah, okie dokie, now is the time to, to get them to align. Um, so we're, in, we're thinking as salespeople that we are in one part of the conversation, but the buyers have got another 
area that they think that they're in. So it's a question of, we need to align this. Yeah, and one of the things that, uh, I mean, I went through this process many years ago with, in a company I was running when we were updating our sales process. And this is something that, you know, companies should be doing on a regular basis. Some don't do it often enough is update your sales process, but we were updating it and we were going through and, and we had laid out this lovely sales process and we were about to roll it out. And then we took a step back and I said, do you know something? This all seems, this all seems great, but it all seems about us, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's try this again, but let's reconfigure it to, uh, to be more focused on the, the buyer. And more importantly, if the buyer is not doing anything during this process, then we can be doing everything under the sun, but this process, the, but the sale isn't moving forward. Absolutely. And to a certain extent, this is where it sort of links in, I suppose, to a certain extent with the challenger methodology, um, because you have to give your buyers tasks to do. And it's only when those tasks have been done and it's reported back to you that you know that you've moved their buying stage. Because at, at the end of the day, our role as salespeople is not to sell. Our role as salespeople is to help the customer make their buying decision. Yep. And during that buying decision process that they're doing, we can be there to facilitate it, but we're not there pushing it in. And that's one of the problems that we tend to have is we, we tend to put a, a square peg into a round hole and hope that it'll fit. Um, and that's going back to the engineers they know that a square peg won't fit in a round hole. Um, and that, that's why it's good to have an engineer with you when you're mapping out. And the other thing that's great about if you take the engineering analogy, right, if, if one part of the process isn't working well in engineering when you're manufacturing or anything, then the whole thing doesn't work, right? If the, if the, if the car comes off the assembly line and it's only got three wheels, right, um, some, it, it, you, you're not gonna sell that car, right? And I think when it comes to sales is people don't spend enough time looking at the process and seeing is every part of the process working properly? Yeah, I, I think one of the challenges there is that, again, looking at, at engineers and salespeople, if there's a problem and a sale doesn't go through, then the salesperson is basically pushed to go and get another sale straight away. Oh, that's happened, that's done, it hasn't worked, so we go and find another sale. The engineer will start saying, okay, why didn't it work? And we need to do a review of the process maybe, because at the end of the day, it's probably the process that's caused the problem. Yeah. And so that's one of the challenges that we don't do. We only learn from failures at the end of the day. We don't yeah. learn from doing stuff right. And, 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 it's and it's interesting that you say that about learning from, because like you said, um, you know, the process needs to be examined. You need to look at what happened. And normally, I mean, obviously there are times when sales fall out for reasons totally beyond your control. Absolutely. But a lot of the, but there's a plenty of times that they fall out because as you say, something happened in the process or something was ignored or a step was skipped or something like that. And if you imagine that in a manufacturing point of view where, you suddenly say, oh, well, we're skipping that step. Oh, yeah, I never do that. And you'd be like, yeah. well, what? <laughs> and, and I think internally, our sales meetings typically do not help it. Because it, if we walk into a room of engineers again, it's right, guys, let's share best practice. You make axles, we make wheels. Let's talk together about how we can do this thing together. Whereas in sales, if I walk into a room with salespeople, it's I'm not going to give my top tips and, and lose the chance of being salesperson of the month. And so you, you do have this internal competitiveness, which can be good, but really, guys, we, we need to control it um, yeah. because it, it can easily get out of hand. Yeah, and if you think about it, if you bring then, uh, say, marketing into the mix, you bring sales and marketing together, well, then you even have the, listen, marketing, we're just going to create a lead and we're going to leave it over here. You will collect it and you will move on, but we shall never really communicate. 
Which, which is strange because uh, exactly you, you have sales and marketing who theoretically are the experts in communication and yet they never talk to each other yeah. and and it's and the larger the firm the more this happens mm. um, so we, we see larger firms where you have a marketing director and a sales director and they've both gone their separate ways and they're both they've both got separate metrics themselves at yeah. the top level and so that feeds down into their their line managers um and because of that that's where we tend to get the upsets yeah and and just uh, just going back again just to the basic thing is especially on the sales side is there's still a resistance in some quarters to the idea of process for sales because you'll still say people go, oh, well, yeah, I've got process, but uh, I'm, I'm more of an I'm more of an artist than I am a scientist. So yeah. uh, let me do my thing. And and the question is then, well, tell me about your last few meetings. Have you ever been into a meeting and come out and thought to yourself, God, I wish I'd have asked that question. Mm. And, and if the answer is yes, then in that case, okay, let's put in a little process, a little checklist for you so that when you go into the meeting, you've got the questions ready to tick off. That's all you need to do is a quick tick. If you don't, I know you're telling me a lie because yeah. I can't find a sales, but I've never yet met a salesperson who's remembered every single thing that he needed to ask the client in that meeting. You yeah. always get this thing afterwards, which says, Darn it, I just wish I'd ask them. And it will probably happen at two o'clock in the morning to the good salespeople. Exactly. And I think think the and I think the other the other part uh, and the other part, Andrew, is that uh, people seem to think the process is like if I'm going to put a sales process together, that somehow that that is going to stay there like that and I have to follow it or whatever. And it's not, it's supposed to be dynamic. And the whole point of lean, right, is that you are constantly tweaking and optimizing the process and i think that's the thing that says people need to realize is that they need to help make this process work for both them and the buyer and they need to input to make it better absolutely i mean as entities we know very little about processes themselves surprisingly enough um what we do know however is that there is no such thing as a perfect process so processes can always be improved and that's what we forget to do with the sales process and that's one of the challenges i have with methodologies is that people seem to get stuck into a rigid methodology rather than the process but they'll get stuck in this rigid methodology and by the time that they've decided that their sales aren't coming in any more it's too late um, you know, they've missed a, a long period of time. So your your sales process needs constant review, as, as you've mentioned before. Yeah, and that, and that unfortunately, as I said, that's one of the things that gets overlooked. And then, I, and it's often when you talk to a company, and I know you probably have this experience all the time, and you go in and say, well, let me look at your sales process. And they go, oh, yeah, our sales process. Yeah, we had the, yeah, um, the VP of sales, I think it was the, not the last one the one maybe it was the one before that he put it together and then you're thinking well how long ago was that and the sales <laughs> part left been left untouched and obviously people don't really pay that much attention to it, it it's funny because i've very seldom get asked in by sales people by sales managers or sales directors i tend to be asked in by uh, ceos or managing directors who say we spend a shed load of money on this sales thing but i because i'm an engineer i just can't get my head around it uh, I, it seems too woolly and fluffy for me and then when you start describing it as a process their eyes just light up and oh we do this this is what we do so i think sales people some sales managers are missing a trick here because if they want to sell more budget up uh to their masters to, to the ceo to the c level they've really got to put it into a process uh conversation so that they can increase their own budgets 
So, so what, what typical response do you get? Okay, so you're brought in by the CEO or the MD to do process, right? And next thing you are with the VP of sales or the sales team. How do they, how do you get them on side? Because obviously I, I, I would assume that there are times when you uh, arrive in and you are greeted, let's say, not maybe with open arms and maybe with a, a high degree of skepticism. Yeah, it's very much uh, because a lot of people equate lean with mean and they think that there's going to be downsizing. Um, whereas, in fact, what we're trying to do is just make them more, help them become more effective and efficient. And if we can do that, then their sales will go up. So typically, I can work it on something which all sales people hate, which is how long do you spend writing reports? Right. And let's look at that in comparison to how long you spend in front of a client. And once you've done that simple math is, oh yeah. Now, if I can help you reduce the time that you spend on reports, but increase the time you spend in front of clients, would that work for you? And I've never had a no to that one. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how to get to buy-in is to basically put it where the salespeople really hate, which is writing reports. Yeah. Uh, and just tell me, not, not... Never read. Yeah, exactly. And, and just tell me, not to mention company names or anything, but can you just give me a couple of examples of where you've done this and what you, what's current state and, or past state and the current state and what impact it had? Because I think it's always good for people to hear about how this has helped. Yeah, um, one of the strange things I've come across with sales processes, especially not so much with the SMEs or the SMBs as they are in the States, but the SMEs over here, is that that's not a problem. But the large companies, um, last one made me sign a 14 page non disclosure agreement because, from their point of view, their sales process is unique to them. And they think it's 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 so special, um, but let let me give you a, a couple of my couple of uh, numbers that that we've done recently. Yeah. Um, one was with um, a group of of hotels, believe it or not, who was selling out into mm -hmm. the event conference room right. uh, area, and uh, they were finding that it was the customers who were not returning. Mm. But it wasn't until we mapped and we saw the numbers about the lack of returners that we could then say, do you actually have something to contact your old existing clients with? And it was, well, no, I mean, surely they'll only have one wedding. Uh, <laughs> well, actually they might, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Sounds, and statistically they probably won't. <laughs> But the thing is, unless you keep them in mind, um, they're not going to be. So all of a sudden, everybody now who comes for a Sunday lunch is now on their data list. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was just small things like that that really make a difference. Um, I had um, a company last year in um, a very warm country. Uh, which was putting in IT services and their clients had a problem because they couldn't quite see what the value was that they were selling. Right. Um, and again, that was a very interesting thing of, well, actually you will probably save thousands of, of I'll say pounds. So yeah, thousands of dollars uh, by doing it this way. I think probably the latest one that we had was on pricing, which was really interesting. Because when you think about pricing, um, and it, especially with this company, they were in the pharmaceutical sector. Right. The clients that they were selling into had their own manufacturing facility. So they were basically selling underneath uh, the price that their own facilities mm. could do. And so typically it was, let's, let's give you a nice round number, 
uh, $5,000 for this test. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And that is what the pharmaceutical company could do it for internally. So this company was saying, well, actually, we can come in and we'll have to do it at four and a half thousand. So they were always topping out, gotcha. but at four and a half thousand. So we went in and we looked at it again and said, you're selling the wrong thing because you're, you're selling this service for four and a half thousand. Right. But you can do it, you're, you can actually do it in a week. And they said, yes, that's right, we do it in a week. That's why they come to us. How long does it take them to do it internally? Oh, around eight weeks. <laughs> okay, so you've got one week versus eight weeks. And these clients are pharmaceutical companies. They are not even going to make a drug unless it's doing at least, let's call it 50 million a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not even going to run it through. Mm -hmm. So in that case, eight weeks, call it a, a million a week. You know, you're saving seven million. You're saving them seven million and you're giving them 500 quid on top. There's something wrong here, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a question. Ah, OK. But if we hadn't have mapped it all out with the timelines of how the customer buys and why the customer buys, we wouldn't have seen that the customer actually wanted to buy time. So we managed to get the price not quite doubled up, but we got it from four and a half to seven and a half within right. a couple of weeks. And the clients were all very happy to accept it once we'd gone through and said, re rekindled our new story, which was, we're not actually going to go and sell it at less money. We're actually going to save you a couple of a few million pounds yeah and i think that's a fantastic example to end with andrew because that is a, a really great example of where process actually ends up uncovering um what the what the buyer need is what the value that you're uh, of, of and what you should be selling i mean it's a fantastic example uh and there you go going from four and a half thousand to seven and a half seven thousand, and a half thousand. Is, well, who, who wouldn't want that percentage price increase coming? It's not a bad increase, is it? Yeah. And for doing nothing else, so it's all, it's all yeah. falls to the bottom line. No other work, it went straight to the bottom line. That's fantastic. All right, well, listen, Andrew, this has been, um, this has been great. Uh, before we go, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, how they can find out more about you. That's great, thank you very much. Well, I'm, my website is www w.lean4salesLimited, uh, sorry, lean4sales.com. I'm based in the UK, but I travel pretty well all over. I even spent my sins, I spent three years in Milwaukee, so um, I, I do come over to, <laughs> to the big country. Um, and I specialize in helping companies improve their sales processes. Fantastic. All right, listen, Andrew, thank you very much. As I said, um, lean is something dear to my heart as well. So this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks.